Hello, this is Clint Halstead and this is a course called Introduction to Microprocessors. We're using a, a textbook called Designing Embedded Systems with PIC Microcontrollers, Principles and Applications. Second edition by Tim Wilmshurst. Currently we're on section 5.5 and this video lesson will be covering breakpoints. So, more use of the MP Lab X simulator. In order to understand this lesson, it'd probably be better if you viewed the, the previous video, which was uh, a YouTube video called PIC 16 Microcontrollers, Unit 28, Chapter 5.2, MP Lab X Watch Window and Branching. So, you can type in these letters and find it. This, this is the video here. <coughs> Okay, <clears throat> so we, we talked about branching and we also we talked about uh, a little bit about uh, how you can add a watch window. But the, pr the problem with the watch window is um, <clears throat> and, and single stepping through a program is sometimes your programs are so long it really becomes very uh, tedious to, to ste single step through the entire code. Uh, in fact, you know, many times there's only one spot in the code you really want to stop and evaluate or register. Now, the problem with, with, with just running the code, for example, if you just hit the, the run button, um, if you just start, if you click this button and start running your code, it just free runs, but the problem is, is the watch window doesn't get updated. So it does, the watch window does not get updated, uh, and we talked about watch windows in the, in the previous lesson, they don't get updated until you press pause. But the problem with pressing pause is it just randomly stops at wherever you, wherever you happen, wherever the code was executing when you hit the pause button. So what we would really like would be a way to pause at a very specific location. For example, let's say that we wanted to pause every time we did a bit test. So this is a loop here, this forward loop. <coughs> It says go to forward, and this is where we're generating the Fibonacci series. Um, and we want a way to, every time this runs through one time, we want to just stop at least once during this loop and evaluate to see what's going to happen. And I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. So that's what we really need. Uh, the way we do this is, is something called a breakpoint. Okay? And I'll teach you, I'll show you how to do that in the MP Lab X simulator. So in the simplest form, the breakpoint allows you to run a program up to a, a, specific, a specified instruction. And program execution stops and memory registers can be inspected. So that's the whole idea. Now remember the Fibonacci series, which we've been working on, we have some code, the full Fibonacci series, and um, <coughs> We're going to be using the, the code from the previous lesson, which came from the website uh, Embedded Know How. Remember that if you watch the previous lesson, that we're using this support website. Uh, you click on Chapter 5, and we're going to use this uh, uh, program 5.2, uh, which we used before. So that's the full code right there. So. <coughs> I just want to go really quick. The, the series counts 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 12. So really the way it works is um, the next number in the series is the addition of the previous two. So, uh, uh, so you can see here that uh, <clears throat> 1 plus 0 is 1. And then you have, now that you have that one, the next is going to be 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. And then, so that gives you 2. Now, to get to 3, you say 2 plus 1, that gives you 3. Now, to get to 5, it's, it's 2 plus 3 gives you 5. And then to get to 8, it's 5 plus 3. So, and then 8 plus 5 is 13. 13 plus 8 is 21. So that, that's what the program is supposed to be calculating. So let's see if we can use breakpoints to see if the code is, is working properly. Okay? <clears throat> Let's 
put that maybe let's put those numbers down here um, and then let's look at the the code so now what we we this is the previous program we've already created this in the previous lesson lesson uh, unit 28 so we're just going to build this program run it let's see what happens okay so it should be running right now let's pause it you can see that it randomly just stops anywhere now we're, we're going to click on our watch window the last lesson taught you how to, to add a watch window we're just going to assume you know how to do that so you can see it just randomly stopped at some point it, we don't really know where it's at so let's reset it to the very beginning by hitting the reset button now what we want to do is if you single step through the code you can see that there's a loop in here that calculates the uh, the series okay now if you look <coughs> the fib temp is, is register 13 and then the fib 0, 1, and 2 that's just kind of intermediate uh, the lowest number middle number and the highest number and then the kind of the result gets put in this fib temp which is 13 so that's right here 13 <coughs> So let's let's kind of show you the I'm going to single step through this at first. Um, yeah, you can see that the first number is you know you got two. Okay, as you step through it down here, if you look at this number, we got two there. But it takes a long time. It's kind of it's kind of annoying. You have to keep stepping through here. Okay, now it goes to three which is correct is 0 1 1 2 3 um, so it seems to be working the next number we want to have is 5 so we keep single stepping through okay now well no we haven't got it there we haven't got there yet we're looking right here at this register we want to see a, a 5 there oh there now we got a 5 okay but this takes a long time right this is not the best way so let's reset the program what if instead of doing that anywhere in this loop doesn't really matter um, let's say that we let's say we, we we stop it as soon as it moves well I don't know any, any it doesn't really matter let's, let's pick a random place any, anywhere inside this code we just want to stop any one time dur during out this throughout this loop so let's just do it when it does the the bit test instruction so the way you set a breakpoint is you can just left click your mouse button right there on the on the numbers on the left side of the screen you don't have to double click in there in like in the previous program just single click another way to, in the t to take the breakpoint away you just click again so you click once to add the breakpoint you click again to remove the breakpoint another way to do it is to right click and say uh, breakpoint toggle breakpoint so that that's another way to do it uh, also you can notice you can you can just show line numbers um, show edit toolbar so there's a few other features right there but let's just go ahead and add the breakpoint so it shows up in red or this kind of a red color so now that we've reset it now let's run it and let's see down here if we can see our series start to develop <clears throat> okay so let's okay so so I'm going to clear it okay now I'm going to run it one time now the code you can see it stops right here at the breakpoint and the number we have here is we have a, a zero in the first one 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 and then this one is five um, now if you hit run again you can see it goes to two five eight thirteen twenty one so three five eight thirteen twenty one so it seems to be seems to be working um, I don't really know why initially it seemed like it didn't initially have the right values. Two, three, five, eight, thirteen, twenty-one. Okay, it seems to be working. Uh, but anyway, that's that's the way the breakpoints work. Um, so that that's about it for breakpoints. Um, you can set multiple breakpoints. For example, you could set a breakpoint here, and then you could. Now, when the series gets uh, too full, when it gets too big of a number, you could uh, re you could uh, breakpoint at the reversing point. So let's click a breakpoint here on the reversing point and see if we can catch the reversing point. 
89, we're looking right here, this 89. Um, one, 144. Oh, one thing I forgot to show you is actually the value here is in hex, but you can actually right click and you can actually say look at the value in decimal. I, for, I forgot to, sh to show you that, but uh, typically when you have your watch window here, everything's in hexadecimal. You right click your mouse and then you can see decimal uh, formatted. So you can look at the value in decimal, which the decimal value, the maximum since for 8 bits is going to be 255. So it should max out when you when you get to 255. So now we're at 233. So that should be pretty much max. Now it should start to count down. Um, so now it should go to reverse. Um, oh, a single step. I need to I need to hit run. So now you can see it actually stopped here instead of it, it was stopping up here. You can see now it stopped on the reverse. Where it's currently at is the green one. So you can see that now it stopped on the reverse command which now it's going to start uh, counting down or it's going to start you know now it's 55 uh, 34 21 okay so it's counting down now 8 5 3 2 1 and uh, 0 and 2 3 5 8 13 21 so you can see that it's counting the right numbers so that's that's pretty much it. Now I can just turn off those breakpoints and uh, just be done. Thank you for watching this uh, video series, and the, then the next uh, lesson or unit is going to be uh, is going to be on the next item in the book, which is going to be the stopwatch. So thank you, and I'll see you for the next video.